Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we're doing a series on uh, a player from every team, I like to call it. We did uh, the second best player from every team, breakout player from every team, the most underrated player from every team. Three videos. Check them out on my channel. Uh, and today we're going to be doing grades, actually, for the goaltending duos from every team should be fun. Going to give them a grade from A to F each team. Uh, all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do you like all four major sports and teams within those all four major sports? Then you'll like www.steelflyers.com. Vloggers, writers, podcasters, growing. If you want to do that sort of thing too, comment in the comment section of my YouTube channel and uh, or Facebook or whatever where you're listening to this on. And uh, you might be able to accomplish that. Have you ever like dreamed of making money do talking about sports? I did. Now I'm doing it. So you might want it too. Uh, I'll also have the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Uh, that is, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get a notification every day as to when I'm going live. And you can come join the frolic it's totally interactive i talk to you you talk to me we talk back and forth and uh whoever it is we get lots of people on there they talk to each other and we just discuss hockey is there anything more in life you want to do than that i don't know not me not me that's what i like to do all right let's look at the goaltending duos from each nhl team here we go we're starting off with the anaheim ducks and we got Gibson and Stolars. Gibson, beast. Unfortunately, I'm not going to bring up his numbers. It hurts me on my insides to look at Gibson's numbers from last year. Although I will say this. Oh, no, I'll talk about that when we talk about him. Uh, he's a fantastic goaltender. Just really struggling. In it. Losing is really seems to be getting to him a lot. Getting really frustrated. I think they should trade him. Uh, now, find a goaltender when you're better. Come on. Like, give the guy. He's 27 or 28, 28 years old. His career is getting on here, Anaheim. And you're not doing anything to help the guy use his skills to win a cup. When, it, when it, He's a great, great, great goaltender. Up there with Hollabuck. He should have a Vesna by now. Okay, that's my rant. Anthony Stolarz, though, I do like that move. Given the given him a shot, late blooming guy. I will look at his numbers a bit. Uh, late blooming guy that has been giving her a go now for like seven years, trying to make it into the NHL as a regular. Uh, played a couple, had a couple cups of coffee with Philadelphia. Uh, struggled to play on a regular basis there. Um, Edmonton a little bit, didn't put up great numbers, put some decent AHL numbers, but he's starting to put it all together here now, it seems. Uh, had a really good year in the AHL in 2020. Uh, also, um, and then ended up playing eight games last year for the Ducks and putting up some decent numbers. And I watched a couple of those games. He looked really good. So I'm giving Anaheim... A B plus. Tell me what you think in the comment section there, Anaheim fans, or anybody else for that matter, uh, about that. Okay. Arizona, uh, F minus. Uh, Carter Hutton has been absolutely deplorable, and I know he was on the Buffalo Sabres, and I'm going to give him a little bit. I should maybe not give him a minus. Because he was on Buffalo, you might be able to give us some saving face here because in uh, St. Louis and uh, in St. Louis in 2017-18, he looked like he was going to be a solid backup, maybe even a starter. And now, and he went to Buffalo. He put up not bad in 50 games in the first season in Buffalo, 0 .908. Not, that's hard to get in, a, in Buffalo, but then it all fell to pieces after that. 318.8898, and he just he looked bad doing it. And then finally, the final year uh, last year was terrible. He had injury issues. 
He apparently, he had eye surgery in 2020 saying that that was his biggest problem and then it didn't do well after that. So I'm giving them, and then Korn, uh, the, the other goaltender, Kornar, Kornash in, it's Kornash, but he doesn't mind being called Kornar. Um, San Jose Sharks had him. He played a couple games last year, won a few, didn't look too bad, um, but didn't look great. And Nabokov there in San Jose is a goalie coach. I would consider him to have an exceptional, good, exceptionally good judge of talent for uh, goaltenders and didn't mind letting him go. So tells you it's something there. I, I got an F minus there. Next. Boston Bruins. Um, you got Jeremy Swayman. I'm down here. They have him right now as a minors goaltender. Uh, but I got to figure that Linus Allmark's going to need some help, a little help. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Swayman's going to be helping him out. Now, if Swayman was as good as, as, as he showed last year, and he is young, so it's a little difficult to say if he's going to have that kind of consistency. But, man, the talent is unreal. I'm giving them an A here. I really, talking about, uh, we just talked about uh, Hutton and uh, in Buffalo. Well, and you saw his numbers. Then you've got Allmark, who also played for Buffalo. And he's putting up a th- 2.69 and a 0.915 in 2020. And last year, even better numbers, but then got injured in only 20 games. I saw, I, I watch quite a bit of uh, Buffalo games, actually. I, I watch every, I watch crazy amounts of hockey. Let's put it that way. And um, I, I, I've been talking about him for a while, so I'm going to give him huge props. And I'm going to give the Bruins an A for picking him up. Uh, not to mention there is a possibility that Ras comes back halfway through the season. However, I, I've been thinking he's going to retire, and uh, we'll see if he actually does. Calgary Flames. Uh, Jacob Markstrom, he uh, gets signed the big six mil a year and doesn't really knock it out of the park last year, does he? Uh, what was his numbers? 2.68 and a 0. .904 is not $6 million a year numbers, my friends. Um, I didn't like the signing. I didn't think he was like that stupendous of a goaltender. And we're going to see if I'm right. Over time here, we'll give them a little more time though. Uh, they're with the uh backup talk going back to uh Boston and they don't have them here, they have them in the minors. I think they're basically saying that these guys are going to fight it out. Wolf Parsons, Adam Werner, he got from Colorado, didn't look good there. Uh, but I think Daniel Vladar is set up to the point where they even gave him a one way contract to do for the following year after this one, Ladar will be there. Um, I'm, I'm giving them a C. Uh, I need to see more of, see what I did there, more of Markstrom and, and showing better than he did. He looked pretty average, and Ladar in Boston was pretty average too. So I'm giving them an average mark, C. Okay, next. Uh, Carolina, I, I think they, uh, it, it's so hard to say here because they got to know something about Frederick Anderson and his injury situation. Um, Frederick Anderson is a good goaltender when he's not hurt, but he's had serious injuries pro- problems as of last year. Um, and then the year before that, I mean, this is with the, Poor defense for Toronto, 2.85.909. He's kind of settled around the 9.17 save percentage mark in uh, Toronto. And that is not bad for Carolina. Those numbers will look a lot better with Carolina's defense, probably. Assuming he's not injured, and that's the thing. And they had Bernier in their hands in their grasps. And apparently they only offered him what they offered, anti-Ranta. 
the also off injured goaltender. This guy is w- injured. Ranta is injured way more than he actually plays. Now, when Ranta plays, he is really fantastic. Uh, he's put like a point nine three zeros and point nine two two in thirty games with Arizona and the New York Rangers. Uh, same as here, two point nine two one. Last year, his numbers were down, but he was injured all the time, man, all the time. Nobody is injured more. So I'm giving the Hurricanes a C minus until I can see that. Both of these goaltenders are, are okay. They're healthy. I just think it's a big risk, especially when you had Bernier in your hands. And I'm going to talk about him a lot. We're going to talk about him when we talk about New Jersey as well. Uh, that uh, he has he was fantastic in Detroit, and we'll look at that when we get to New Jersey. The Blackhawks, A-plus, man. Oh, my gosh. This Lankin kid comes. He's not even really a kid. Older guy that they've been working on for a long time. I remember when they let Crawford go last year. I had Chicago, like, bottom of the league, not making the playoffs, all of those sort of things like that. And uh, Lankin, you know, lit it up really well last year. He, uh, he faded down the stretch, though. So, and ended up with the 3.03 or sorry, 1.51 in Finland. But in 2000, he had a 3.01 and a 0.909. A lot of that was from, he faded down the stretch. And Chicago plays a very uh, risk, uh, a very risky game and gives up a a lot of significant shots. Um, However, you put him together with Marc-Andre Fleury, who won the Vezina last year as the best goaltender, and probably shouldn't have, but definitely deserved to be in the conversation strongly. Uh, I'm giving them an A+. I mean, I think you have to give them an A+, until you see otherwise. That combination could be just stacked. One of the best in the league, for sure. It is stacked. It's a stacked you know, we'll see if Flurry can keep her going at 37, but he hasn't shown any signs of slowing down yet. Next, Darcy Kemper and Francis from the Avalanche. Um, really, it comes again. Here we go with the injury with Francis. I mean, if Francis is okay, he's. I don't know what that injury was, but it kept him out pretty much the whole year. Um, but in while he was in, he was a 2.41. In a, did he play that many games? No, that was 2000. Did he play that many games last year, really? 1920. No, that was 2021. Nothing. He didn't play at all. But when he was in before that, he, was, he did well. So as long as he's healthy, he should be okay as a backup. But there is a question mark there. But they have Darcy Kemper, uh, who is... Uh, is you know has been kind of hiding in Arizona for quite some time now. Basically, has kept them in a lot, and uh, I think yeah, there's 2021. He put a 2.56, a little bit of a down year for him at 0. 0.907, but before that, he was always in the twos, 0. 0.92s, and I imagine with Colorado's defense, those numbers are going to look spectacular. So I gave them a B plus just because Francis is, there's a lot of question marks there. Um, and losing Grubauer, well, it's okay if you can recover with Kemper, I think. Next, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, Albert Merzlikens and Jonas Corposalo. Um, I'm giving them a C plus. I really like Elvis. I don't like Corpusala. I think he was overplayed. He was a benefit of Barry Trotz's system that made his numbers look all right. Maybe you could say the same about Merzlikens, though. I'm a little concerned. He only put a .916 yet last year. But Tortorella's voice started to fall on deaf ears last year, and uh, the team didn't play well in front of him. So I'm going to stick with the goaltender that came out flying 
and put up a 0.923 here. And I'm going to give them a benefit of the doubt. But Corpus Allo, uh I don't know why he kept on playing him over the, all, all the time. Uh, his numbers, I haven't even looked at his numbers. Uh, 3.30 and a 0.894. And the year before that was his best year at a 0.09 or 911. Uh, not great. Not great. So I'm giving them a C plus. Next, um, Detroit. Uh, I understand the pickup of Nedeljkovic. Uh, Nedeljkovic is a lot younger than Bernier. It gives an opportunity. They'll roll the dice and see if he can become a number one with them. He put up really, I mean, spectacular numbers in 23 games, but it was the first time he ever did that in a Carolina defense that is absolutely fantastic, and Carolina didn't want to pay him, and they he wasn't asking for a lot, a lot. I think he just they just realized that he's got some holes, and he does. He's They're going to have to work on him quite a bit in Detroit. Uh, I think another year... And those holes would start to become more apparent and those numbers wouldn't look so good. Uh, Thomas Grice, serviceable veteran, but I think they're not as good as they were last year. I got him as a C plus, to tell you the honest truth. We'll see what Nedeljkovic can do, but losing Bernie was huge. Bernie, I, I watched a lot of Detroit games last year and uh, Bernie was... Like, the reason why they were in games, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, ridiculous reasons. Stopping 50 shots. And uh, so, yeah, I I, uh, I, I, it's, I, understand why they let him go. It's almost like they're too good with them because they're still rebuilding. So, next, Edmonton Oilers. Uh, I'm giving them a C- minus because... Smith is old. I love Smith. I almost gave him higher just because Smith is so good. But uh, only having Miko Koskinen as your backup, if Smith gets hurt, which is possible at 39 years old, they're screwed. So I know they tried for Kemper, and I, I guess they probably couldn't find anybody else. But this isn't about how well they did to acquire. This is what with, uh, I'm rating what they have. And uh, that's, what, that's what I'm giving them. Uh, Panthers, um, geez, is Bobrovsky so sad? I'm I'm giving them a surprisingly high mark. I don't know, may not be surprising to a lot of people out there, but Spencer Knight is just absolutely fantastic. I have very little doubt that he's going to keep on going the way he showed in the in regular season last year with the two. I know it was only four games, but he's put up spectacular numbers pretty much everywhere he's gone. And I don't think that's going to change. Uh, Bobrovsky could get better. I, I've heard, Florida Panthers fans, that, there, that he could possibly get traded to Arizona to remove that $10 million contract. Now, that's going to cost prospects and picks and stuff like that, but... Probably worth it to remove that and uh, to be able to get um, somebody else to play backup and maybe another player on the roster. But um, I'm giving him a B. Just I love Spencer Knight that much, and that's saying a lot for like putting that much pressure on a 20 year old. I normally would not give a high mark for that. Next, uh, uh, L.A. Kings. I love Cal Peterson a lot. Uh, he has done yeoman work with the Kings team that's been trying to figure things out for the last couple of years as they kind of rebuild. Uh, his numbers haven't looked spectacular, but the team has not played all that well in front of him. So um, I think he's going to do, I think this is going to be a big year for him as the team matures in front of him. Um, I'm giving them a B with quick I almost want to go C plus. He really is. His age is starting to show quite a bit. Uh, but I'm giving him a B for now because I just think Peterson's going to hit even a higher place. He's it's getting. He's 26. It's like right in his prime now. 27, 28, where his big years are coming, and I think they're going to come for him. 
wild, uh, beautiful move picking up Cam Talbot. Uh, Capo Kakinen is good. Um, how great is he going to be? It's hard to tell yet. Um, I gave him a B. I almost want to give him a B plus because Talbot played so good. It's just a, it feels like a B, and I don't even really know why. Minnesota Wild fans, tell me what you think. Every, uh, what, what do you think about the uh, score there? It's hard for me to say. I don't know where Kako Kapanen is going to go. I thought he might be a little better than he was last year in 24 games. He, he put up silly numbers in the AHL. So I'm, I'm kind of on the fence of where his upside is, and that's why I'm kind of giving him a B. If I thought he was going to crush it, I'd probably go a B plus here. Talbot played exceptional last year. So that's what I'm giving. Uh, now, Montreal. And this is hard. This is really hard to, to do for Montreal because Price has not played great in the regular season the last couple of years. He crushed it last year in the playoffs, gave it everything he had. But regular season has been pretty meh. For him, the last two years, and you know, maybe exception being 2018 19. But besides that, it's pretty, pretty man. And then Allen is a really good backup, fantastic backup. So he's, but he's a backup. I'm giving them a B, hard B. What do you think, Montreal fans? Just it's hard to just give him a B after that spectacular playoffs, but you got to make it. And if he, the, this team doesn't look like a, it, may, it looks like it may not be as strong as the year before. So I think they're going to need him to be a lot better than he was in the regular season last year. Next, uh, New Jersey Devils, um, A plus. I love the pickup of Bernier. I love, 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 love it. As long as Blackwood, Blackwood had a little bit of injury issues last year, but besides that, he played fantastic. He's just reaching a, a plateau. Uh, he's he's breaking plateaus and becoming better and better. Bernier, this is Bernier's numbers here. Uh, 2.99 and a .914 in 24 games last year uh, with Detroit. He also, no, that was right. That was just with Detroit. The year before, he put a .907, and you're like, these aren't great numbers. What are you talking about? They are fantastic numbers playing in behind that Detroit defense. Uh, I think you're going to see him crush it in New Jersey. I said, like I said, I saw him on night stop 50 shots like crazy, stopping shots, stopping shots. So I'm giving New Jersey an A+. Tell me what you think, Jersey fans. Varlamov and Sorokin, I'm giving them an A-plus as well. Two A-pluses in a row here. Um, I think Sorokin's going to just reach new levels here. He's 26. In the KHL, he just put up stupid numbers. Took a little while to adjust, but even while he adjusted to the, uh, to, uh, the NHL, he still put up 2.17 and a 0.918 for the Islanders. Now that's behind a fantastic defense, but look at this. Look at his Russian numbers here in the KHL. 1.15, and 4.0. Like just stupid numbers. And I think you're going to see, I think you could see him wrestle the number one spot from Varlamov. And I didn't even mention Varlamov here, who could have won a Vesna last year. So, yeah, I think that's a product, a lot of a great system for, for trots. But still, that is one fantastic combination. A-plus for the Islanders. Uh, Devils, or sorry, New York Rangers. And for some reason, I missed the Predators here. I don't know where they went, but. I uh, gave the Predators a B minus. Uh, New York Rangers, another A plus. Three A pluses in a row. Shesterkin is to me. I think he could win the. I think he could win the Vesna next year. Twenty five years old. It's going to be tough because there's a lot of great goaltenders out there. 
to do that, but I just love this kid. I mean, he is an amazing goaltender. Um, look at like he was he had some injury issues last year, but 2.62.916, not great. Your Rangers weren't playing great defensively, but still pretty darn good, especially for a relatively young goaltender. Uh, and 2.52 and a 0. 0.932. They just signed him up to $6 million a year. It's just undeniable. And what was that play, uh, playoffs? 1.95. That was right. Uh, it's just undeniable when you watch him. He, he's got like Hashik like reflexes. And I, I just love the guy. So I gave him an A+. Gorgiev is a very good, very, very good 1B backup guys too. So um, probably will get traded away here because I'm sure he wants to give it a shot as a number one somewhere. And he's not doing it in the Rangers there after they gave him that huge contract. I heard rumblings of it. May happen. Uh, next, Senators. Uh, I got to give him like a D. Uh, they don't have Gustafson. They have Anton Forsberg here. I like Gustafson better. Um, there we are. Philip Gustafson, 23. I think he's going to steal the number one here unless Murray turns it around. I'll get into that a little bit. In nine games, he put up some solid numbers. Now, that's a small sample size for him, but um, he's been pretty solid everywhere he, where he's gone. Now, in the AHL, you see those poor numbers, but Ottawa didn't have a strong team really either. Um, I think he's probably the future for them, but it's Murray. D plus might even, like, just a flat D. I got to see more out of Murray than what we have seen for quite some time here. Very big gamble that they gave him the $6 million a year. And uh, obviously they had some goaltending coaches or somebody tell them that they could turn him around. And if they do, then great, but I haven't seen it. So that's my score for Ottawa. Probably what keeps them out of the playoffs next year if they if they miss uh, if they miss Flyers Carter Hart and Jones I gotta give him a C minus Carter Hart just struggled terribly I think Carter Hart is going to turn it around I think it was a maturity thing and I hear that A V talking about uh, he needs to. Um, work harder and all of those sort of things like that. I imagine this off season, he's going to put his mind towards it and be a, be the Carter Hart that we expected him to be. So for that, I'm giving them a C, but a minus for Jones, who just has been a bad goaltender for quite some time. I'm, I don't know how to say it any. He's just not good. He's not good. And I know that they have a goaltender coach that – uh, he worked with in junior or AHL, something of that nature. But 2.94 and an 8.96, like averaging an 8.96 on the dot for the last three years in San Jose, just ain't good enough, man. It's not good enough. So we'll see what happens, but I got to go by what I've seen so far, and it doesn't look good. So I'm giving him a C- as of now. I never would have thought I'd be saying that about freaking flyers and goaltending but we'll see carter hart's going to turn it around i know it uh next pittsburgh yeah well we got to see they 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 got another case of where they uh brought their goaltender coach from the ahl up to work with the smith and jari apparently they did better with him than anybody else the last goaltender coach got fired also was the goaltender coach for murray and Flurry, though, but uh, something ain't working there, so they fired him. We'll see how they turn around, but from, I mean, DeSmith didn't do too bad, but Tristan Jari was just a, especially in the playoffs last year, was a dumpster fire. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. Uh, but even in the regular season, those are not number one numbers there 2.7 and 9.09. Uh, in the playoffs, ooh, ugly, 3.18. He looked terrible last year. Um, those, especially for a Pittsburgh team that's very responsible defensively, it's got to be a lot better. And uh, so I'm giving them an F. 
only only worse is the Arizona Coyotes so far. The Sharks. Um, I got a D D minus. I mean, Aiden Hill didn't put up great numbers last year in Arizona. They picked him up. Now I imagine a Baca see something in him, and I I understand it. He's got like that. Sean Burke type style, stand upish, good reflexes, big guy. I think they're probably going to work with him to. In the World Championships, he put up some pretty good numbers there. Um, I think that they can work with him and improve his uh, overall game, but I got to see it. Uh, and with uh, Reimer from Carolina, again, they must think that they can get something out of him that we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, giving him $2 million a year. I mean, he played with a really good defense in front of him last year and did not put up great numbers for it. 2.66 and a .906 is not great numbers playing in behind a fantastic system and defense in Carolina. So uh, I gave him a D-. minus. Uh, St. Louis Blues is next, and uh, Bur- Bingham, Bingham. Oh, sorry, Seattle. Seattle is next, not the St. Louis Blues. Seattle. Uh, Philip Grubauer and Drigger. It's good. I gave him a B. Um, I want. I'm not. A, I'm not a big, big supporter of Grubauer. I think I want to see him with the. Now with maybe, I mean, Colorado's defense was fantastic. And did the Colorado defense make him look better than he was? Um, It's possible because, like, he put up really good numbers in 40 games, 1.95 and a 0.22. But before that, he didn't put it. It was like his biggest year. Before that, he was at 2.63 and a .916, which with Colorado's defense, which was still very, very good. So I'm a little concerned that at the very least, uh, uh, most, I think it's probably going to be back to the 2.63 and the .916. We'll have to see. And Drigger, I mean, he played well on a small sample size with Florida, but faded heavily in the playoffs. So um, I'm giving him a... I'm giving him a B. We'll see what happens. Now the St. Louis Blues. Jordan Bennington and Ville Husso. Um, Husso is, he could break out. Bennington, if he could just get his attitude in check. When he's his head's in the game, he's fantastic. But he's too inconsistent for me, man. Uh, you don't see it enough with him. Uh, maybe he matures this year. Huso could break out this year, but right now I got him on a C plus, C plus for the Blues. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning A plus, just with Vasilevsky alone. Um, I almost gave him an A because Brian Elliott's had a bad year, but they did upgrade from McElhaney probably. But Vasilevsky is just unbelievable. I'm I, I've given him an A plus. You could give him an A, I guess, and I wouldn't argue too much because Brian Elliott isn't, like, spectacular, but uh, he's the greatest goaltender in the game. So I believe Vasilevsky is. Leafs, I'm giving them a D. I don't like Peter Mrazek. I I know he put up some decent – but you got to – sometimes you just got to watch a guy. Carolina really worked around the fact that Mrazek overplays – overplays the uh, puck too often. And they have their defense set up for that because it just doesn't seem like it's ever going to change with them. It's always been a problem with them, and it was a problem with them last year. Now, 12 games, he had fantastic numbers. Carolina's defense was playing like freaking beautiful last year, and I think that makes the numbers look a little better than they were. The year before is more like it, 0.905. Yeah, somewhere around there, that's what he is. I think he's a 1B, one, one uh, 1A, like, but needs support. And Campbell, I mean, he had a great run. Uh, I, I'm, I'm rooting for Campbell. He's worked his butt off to get to where he is, and I 
I love that. You know, I love that in a guy. You always want to root for those guys. But is he a number one? No. So you got two guys that are at, like above average or two, two guys that are average to below average. Uh, I'm giving him a D. I, I just, I don't think this, especially when Toronto's trying to win a cup right now, I don't see this goaltending doing it. I just, I don't. Uh, Vancouver Canucks, Demko is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm giving them a B. Um, I If they had an average, I don't think Yuroslav Halak is going to do great in Vancouver. He has holes, and once they're identified, it's like glove hand, up over the glove hand. Everybody knows it. And uh, I almost should give like a B minus. A B minus. I really didn't like that pickup by getting. But Demko is so good. So good. I know he hasn't put up put it up all together in the regular season yet. Uh, he had that one good run in the playoffs, but it's coming. It'll happen. Unfortunately, is you know Vancouver's defense isn't that great, so that might affect his numbers. But I do like Demko, Laner, and Brassois. I love the pickup of Brassois here. Um, he did fantastic with Hollabuck the last couple of years. He's going to get a bigger opportunity. I think Laner probably wouldn't play as much as Halibut does. Um, Laner is a question mark, but I think his skill is just too hard to ignore. Um, it's a, it's the mental thing. But I'm thinking he's going to crush it. And if Bersois there, it'll look pretty good as well. Um, what did Bersois put up the last few years? Uh, I think it's probably pretty solid. Uh, 2.42 and a point nine one eight last year. Yeah, the year before was kind of an anomaly for him. He didn't have a great year. And then fantastic in 2018-19. For the most part, he's played well almost every year. I uh, I think he's going to play really well in front of that Vegas defense. It's going to look really good on him. Capitals, uh, I gave him a C minus. I'm not a big Samsonov guy. They keep on going with this kid. Uh, but he's good. And he's young. Uh, it's just hit or miss right now. He could put it all together this year. And they obviously believe he can because they keep on going to him. But for a team that is like win now, like so win now, if they have any chance at all, that's not the guy. I would have went for a free agent. Like I would have went after Flurry, or maybe they did. I don't know. But uh, I'm a little suspect, and I'm not a big Vanacek guy. So I got a C minus for Washington. Uh, the Jets, Hollabuck, Eric Comrie, big question mark. I think they may try to find another goaltender yet before the season starts. But as it stands, uh, I haven't liked Comrie when I've seen him really. So he's going to really have to step up this year in order first. And he has to do it first. And I haven't seen it. So I'm giving them kind of a B because of the Comrie thing. Uh, Hellebuck also did not have a spectacular year last year. But I, I think he'll rebound. But as of right now, I'm giving it a B. Well, that's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to go. I hope you enjoyed this fine program. Uh, you can uh, see me at, again, my show. Just subscribe and hit the bell there. Um, I got a letter here. I wanted The reason why I did this video, I got a letter from uh, Ada Parnusic from Slovakia. And uh, they asked me, uh, could you put your teams in alphabetical order? That was a short letter, I'll tell you that right now, from Slovakia. So I did. For you, my friend. For you. Alphabetical order. There you go. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Okay, bye.